Are you testing on people right now? No, we're not testing on people yet, but I, I think we may be able to implant a neural link in less than a year in, in a person, I think. Once you, once you become a god, I mean, you, you literally could fundamentally change the way human yeah. beings interface with each other. Yes. Yes. Elon Musk, said to be one of the world's smartest people, is creating technology that directly correlates with what Satan told Eve in the Garden of Eden. Genesis chapter 3, verse 5. Then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Ye shall be as gods. Sound familiar? It's everywhere nowadays. From New Age theology, meditation, and astral travel, to technological advances that promise to enhance the human experience to levels straight off the pages of a science fiction novel. Except, it's no longer science fiction, it's science fact. You want to speak every language known to man? Simply download that program. It, in a situation like this, that you would be able to just, it would be kind of like the Matrix, you, you want to speak a different language, no problem. You want to download the program. You want to connect your brain to Bluetooth devices? You replace that, say, one-inch diameter piece of skull with the Neuralink device, and that has a battery and a, and a Bluetooth and an inductive charger. What about uploading your consciousness to the cloud so that when you die, you live on through the Internet? Almost all the neurons are connected to uh, your, the, the sort of AI extension of yourself. It would just be that, that more of you would be in the cloud, I guess, than in your body. The Bible tells us that in the last days, people will seek death and will not find it. Revelation 9, 6. In those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire to die and death will flee from them. I find it curious that Elon Musk created technology that seemingly eliminates death as a possibility to any person that's connected to it. Think about it. Let's say a person takes this implant, then dies, but their consciousness is uploaded into the cloud. After a period of time, this person realized that it was a mistake and they want to exit the cloud, but they can't. This would be them seeking death and not being able to find it, exactly what Revelation 9-6 says. Furthermore, there's something interesting about the verse directly before it. The locusts were not given the power to kill them, but only to torment them for five months, and their torment was like the stinging of a scorpion. Do you think it's any coincidence that Elon Musk's neural link is implanted into the brain via a scorpion-like stinger? It's actually a robot that bears a mighty resemblance to the scorpion stinger, but we'll get to that a little bit later. So what exactly is this neural link that Elon Musk created, and how does it work? If someone ultimately does get a neural link installed, what will take place? Well, for version one of the device, it would be it basically implanted in your skull. So you basically uh, take out a chunk of skull, replace, put the neural link device in there. You'd insert the electrode threads very carefully into the, the brain, stitch it up, and, um, and you wouldn't even know that somebody has it. To find out the details regarding Neuralink, let's head over to their website and see what it's all about. Alright, so here we are at the Neuralink website. And if you click this link here, it's going to take us to the research papers. So let's check it out. An integrated brain-machine interface platform with thousands of channels. Elon Musk Neuralink. Abstract. Brain-machine interfaces, or BMIs, hold promise for the restoration of sensory and motory function and the treatment of neurological disorders. But clinical BMIs have not yet been widely adopted, in part because modest channel counts have limited their potential. In this white paper, we describe Neuralink's first steps toward a scalable, high-bandwidth BMI system. We have built arrays of small, flexible electrode threads with as many as 3,000 and 72 electrodes per array distributed across 96 threads. We have also built a neurological robot capable of inserting six threads, 192 electrodes per minute. Each thread can be individually inserted into the brain with micron precision for avoidance of surface vasculature and targeting specific brain regions. The electrode array is packaged into a small implantable device that contains custom chips for low power 
onboard amplification and digitization. The package for 3,072 channels occupies less than 23 by 18.5 by 2 millimeters. A single USB-C cable provides full bandwidth data streaming from the device recording from all channels simultaneously. This system has achieved a spiking yield of up to 70% in chronically implanted electrodes. Neuralink's approach to BMI has unprecedented packaging, density, and scalability in clinical relevant packages. So what they're saying here is they created a brain-machine interface that connects directly to the neurons inside of your brain, allowing you to connect a USB-C device to the neural link. Let's continue on. Introduction. Brain-machine interfaces, BMIs, have the potential to help people with a wide range of clinical disorders. For example, Researchers have demonstrated human neuroprosthetic control of computer cursors, robotic limbs, and speech synthesizers using no more than 256 electrodes. While these successes suggest that high fidelity information transfer between brains and machines is possible, development of BMI has been critically limited by the inability to record from large numbers of neurons. Non-invasive approaches can record the average of millions of neurons through the skull, but this signal is distorted and nonspecific. Invasive electrodes placed on the surface of the cortex can record useful signals, but they are limited in that they average the activity of thousands of neurons and cannot record signals deep in the brain. Most BMIs use invasive techniques because the most precise readout of neural representations requires recording single action potentials from neurons in distributed functionality linked assembles. So in the introduction here, they're saying that this technology has the capability to help people that have brain injuries by using these neural link wires and connecting them to parts of the brain that may be injured or damaged for some reason. Let's keep reading. Further on down the page, we read this. Here, we report Neuralink's progress towards a flexible, scalable BMI that increases channel count by an order of magnitude over prior work. Our system has three main components, ultra-fine polymer probes, a neurosurgical robot, which is that scorpion stinger I was telling you about, and custom density electronics. We demonstrate the rapid implantation of 96 polymer threads each thread with 32 electrodes for a total of 3,072 electrodes. We develop miniaturized custom electronics that allow us to stream full broadband electrophysiology data simultaneously from all these electrodes. We package this system for long-term implantation and develop custom online spike detection software that can detect action potentials with low latency. Together, this system serves as a state-of-the-art research platform and a first prototype towards a fully implantable human BMI. Now, in this Joe Rogan podcast, Elon says that a working BMI or a working neural link implant is ready to install in humans in about a year from now. And as you'll see, they've already installed this on rats. Let's continue reading. Section 2 threads. We have developed a custom process to fabricate minimally displacive neural probes that employ a variety of biocompatible thin film materials. The main substrate and dielectric used in these probes is polyimide, which encapsulates a gold thin film trace. Each thin film array is composed of a thread area that features electrode contacts and traces and a sensor area where the thin film interfaces with custom chips that enable signal amplification and acquisition. So they're basically saying that they've developed these very, very tiny wires that go into your brain and they can put them on specific neurons to control the action of that neuron. Basically, what they do is they cut a square hole out of the skull and using the scorpion-like stinger, they go into your skull bypassing any arteries or veins because this scorpion-like stinger is a robot which is specifically programmed to, quote, non-invasively implant these wires. And these wires are attached to a square that's fused to the back of your head where you can plug in a USB cable. He goes on to say, we have designed and manufactured over 20 different thread and electrode types into our arrays. Two example designs are shown in panels A and B of figure 1, which is on the screen right now. 
probes are designed either with the reference electrodes on separate threads or on the same thread as the recording electrodes, referred to as on-probe references. We have fabricated threads ranging from 5 to 50 microns in width that incorporate recording sites of several geometries. Thread thickness is normally 4 to 6 microns, which includes up to 3 layers of insulation and 2 layers of conductor. Typical thread length is approximately 20 millimeters. To manage these long, thin threads prior to insertion, Perylene C is deposited into the threads to form a film on which these threads remain attached until the surgical robot pulls them off. Each thread ends in a 16 by 50 micron loop to accommodate the needle threading. So basically, they designed these tiny little wires that are implanted by this robot and can go into specific places to control different functions of the brain. And keep in mind, this is less than a year away from being implanted into the first human. The rest of section two just talks more technical details about the threads and the wires themselves. Let's move on to section three, which is the robot. This robot resembles the scorpion stinger I was talking about earlier. If you look, you can see it's like a little needle that goes directly into your brain. Section three. Quote, thin film polymers have previously been used for electrode probes, but their low bending stiffness complicates insertions. Neuralink has developed a robotic insertion approach for inserting flexible probes. This is what you see on the screen here. Compared to the size of a penny, look how tiny it is compared to a penny. It's almost microscopic. And this is what they're going to be putting into people's brains. Continuing on. Allowing rapid and reliable insertion of large numbers of polymer probes targeted to avoid vasculature and record from dispersed brain regions. The robot's insertion head is mounted on a 10 micron globally accurate 400 millimeter by 400 millimeter by 150 millimeter travel three axis stage and holds a small quick swappable needle pincher as you see in the picture here. This is the actual picture of the robot. The needle is milled from a 40 micron diameter tungsten rhenium wire stock electrochemically etched to 40 microns diameter allowing the inserted length the tip of the needle is designed to both hook onto insertion loops for transporting and inserting individual threads and to penetrate the meninges and brain tissues the needle is driven by a linear motor allowing variable insertion speeds and rapid reaction accelerations and as you can see here here's a picture here's a picture of this scorpion stinger robot in action implanting these tiny wires into a brain or a brain-like substance. There's quite a bit more technical information on this robot, but we're going to skip that and we're going to move to the next section, section four, electronics. Quote, chronic recording from thousands of electrode sites presents significant electronics and packaging challenges. The density of recording channels necessitates placing the signal amplification and digitization stack within the array assembly, otherwise the cable and connector requirements would be prohibitive. This recording stack must amplify small neural signals while rejecting out-of-band noise, sample and digitize the amplified signals, and stream out the results for real-time processing, all using minimal power and size. And here's a picture here of the diagram. You can see the chip. This is the little square that will be implanted into your skull. And there's the little USB port right there you can plug your wires into. And here's a picture of the rat that they successfully implanted the neural link on. It goes on to say, an ethernet connected base station converts the data streams from these systems into multicast 10G ethernet UDP packet, allowing downstream users to process the data in a variety of ways, e.g. visualizing the data in real time or writing it to disk. Each base station can connect up to three implants simultaneously. These devices are further supported by a software ecosystem that allows for plug and play usability with zero configuration. Neural data be Begin streaming automatically when the cable is connected. So basically, when you're connected to this thing, they're able to download your thoughts, download your memories, and store it on a drive real time, and even see through your eyes. Let's move on to section five, electrophysiology. We have implanted both systems A and B in male long Evans rats, as described in section three. All animal procedures were performed in accordance with the National Research Council's guide for the care and use of lab laboratory animals and were approved by the Neuralink Institutional Animal Care and Use Committee. Electrophysiological recordings were made as these animals freely explored the arena equipped with the commutated cable that permitted unrestricted movement. System A can record 1,000 
344 out of 1536 channels simultaneously. The exact channel configuration can be arbitrarily specified at the time of recording. System B can record from all 3072 channels simultaneously. Digitized broadband signals were processed in real time to identify action potential spikes using online detection algorithm. So basically, they can connect these rats to the Neuralink software and have full control over the brain in real time using a broadband connection. The rest of this section goes on with a lot of technical jargon that goes more into depth about these experiments with the rats. This white paper goes on in a lot more detail if you're interested. Just go to the website and click the link. You can read it for yourself. But Elon himself told us how close we are to seeing this in actual human. And some of the capabilities of this in humans are mind-blowing. Basically, it connects the brain to the internet. And the way he was talking in this Joe Rogan podcast, he was saying that eventually everybody's going to get it because it's going to make you so much better than somebody without it. So the people without it are going to be left behind. During the podcast, Joe Rogan asks where this technology will be in 10 to 25 years. And Elon's response was shocking. Like you could hang out with 30-year-old you? I mean, the possibilities are endless. You could recall everything They're just like it's a movie including all the entire sensory experience emotions everything, everything 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 and play it back he goes on to say that in 25 years he's confident that there could be a whole brain interface that connects every aspect of who you are to the internet everything from your personality to your memories and even with the capability to separate time itself so you can relive old memories and feel the emotions you can smell the smells of your memories you can go back and even create a secondary person seemingly implanting your own personality into some sort of machine he says the possibilities are endless again this technology is the physical manifestation of the same lie that satan told eve in the garden of eden Ye shall become as gods. The schemes of the devil are always telegraphed by the desired outcome. In Isaiah 14, 13 through 14, we can clearly see what Satan's ultimate goals are. Quote, I will ascend to the heavens. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. I will sit on the mount of assembly in the far reaches of the north. I will ascend above the tops of the clouds. I will make myself like the most high. End quote. Therefore, whenever we see something that has the ultimate goal of removing the Most High God from the equation, something like Elon Musk's neural link, for instance, there can be no question as to its origin. 2 Corinthians verse 4, chapter 4 In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. You see, we must keep our eyes fixated on Jesus at all costs. Everything else is just a distraction because the one who endures to the end will be saved. If you enjoyed this video, please take the time to add a comment, tell us how you feel, and don't forget to hit that like button. And until next time, thank you all for watching. God bless you all.